Oop. There you go. Small one. Yeah. No, not good one. That's a good one. Good one. So much fun, so much fun. On top, too. That one was on top. Look at that baby, huh? Woo! On one of my all time favorite poppers. X Rap Pop. You know, it seems like every single year for the past 15 years, I keep saying the same old thing. Smallmouth fishing all over the US and Canada is getting better and better and better. We're catching more and bigger smallmouth than ever before. Now there's a lot of reasons for that. The percentage of big fish all over the country is amazing. You know, I've spent some winters down south on the lower Colorado River system on Lake Havasu and on Mojave, which is a real gem, and did phenomenal catching smallmouth. I loved it down there in the wintertime. I got him in Texas. I got him in New Mexico. Yeah, New Mexico. I got him in Oklahoma. Uh, all of the Great Lakes, play places like uh, 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 Lake Erie, Lake Sinclair, a uh, Sturgeon Bay this past year put up an eight pounder, a uh, uh, big and bay, big and little bay to knock, all over Malak in my hometown. If you're a bass fan, you heard about it. Bass exposed it. This year they're going to the M Missouri River system in the Dakotas. This has been one of the best kept secrets in the smallmouth world for years. You've got uh, Lake Dorsha in Idaho that they believe the next world record is coming out of. In my hometown in Brainerd, Minnesota, one of our, our friends, John Janicek, about a week and a half ago sent us a picture of a smallmouth bass that was one ounce short of the state record. It was 715 weighed and certified. The smallmouth explosion is one of the biggest things happening in the sport fishing industry today. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how the industry is reacting to this phenomena. Closed captioning is provided by Smooth Moves, adjustable boat seat suspensions for a smoother ride. <laughs> That's what everybody loves about smallmouth, what you just saw right there. That's what they love. White water, tail walking, they jump, they bite everything. You know what, I think one thing that's really interesting about smallmouth is, well, they kind of go hand in hand. They eat a lot of different baits because they're programmed to. These fish are not super particular about what they eat. They eat whatever nature uh, has on the menu. You know what I mean? These fish will eat mayflies, they'll eat perch, they'll eat crayfish, they'll eat whatever nature's serving up. They're not bashful. See those chompers? They love to get after it. Let this guy go like any good smallmouth fisherman should. You know, there's a lot of uh, technique specific rods, reels, and line for smallmouth fishing, but it doesn't have to be that elaborate. I want uh, Jeremy Smith to show you two rods, reels, and line combos that you can get into for smallmouth fishing. If you only had to buy two, this is what we recommend. Smallmouth are one of the funnest fish to catch in fresh water and they can be caught on a ton of different presentations. Most of the smallmouth fishing that we do is done with open face spinning equipment. That's not to say that there isn't a place for bait casters, but for people that are just getting started, spinning equipment is certainly the way to go. It's easy to fish and it delivers most of the top presentations better than bait casting. So, I'll start with the one rod that I have in my hand a lot of the time. That is a six foot 10 medium power extra fast action. This is a rod that I use for a lot of jerk bait fishing and I fish a lot of bottom presentations like popping a tube off the bottom. And on here I've got a size 25 reel and you'll notice the line on here is yellow. This is suffix 832, it's high vis yellow. So this is a great line for those slack line presentations because when a fish bites, I'm able to see the line actually jump. And I like this slightly larger size reel because it picks up line quickly. So if I do get a bite on slack, it's just a few cranks of the reel handle, the rod starts to load up and I'm tight with the fish. The second combo that I'd recommend is for a little bit more of the finesse fishing. This is a seven foot six medium light extra fast action rod. On here I've got a size 2000 reel, slightly smaller than the previous, and I've got six pound suffix 
nano braid on here. Now both of these combos that I've got on hand, I'll tie a fluorocarbon leader on the, onto the, uh, to the braided line or the main line. Depending on, I'll use a certain pound test based on the presentation that I'm fishing. Now I like the smaller reel for this because I tend to fish baits a little slower. I'm often fishing baits that I'm reeling in a straight line, not so much slack line fishing. And the, the length of the rod, I like this, this longer rod because I can throw light baits farther. I use this rod for doing a lot of hair jigging and most of the finesse work that say presentations under a quarter ounce. It's also a deadly drop shot rod. And this suffix nano braid is absolutely the most incredible line that I've ever fished with for throwing light presentations a really long distance. This stuff is a must have on, your, on some piece of equipment that you've got if you like pan fishing or if you like finesse fishing because this stuff really changes the game in terms of casting long distances. Now this happens to be St. Croix's Legend Elite and this is St. Croix's Legend X and I've got the Daiwa Ballistic and the Daiwa Tatula both in the LT family. Now these are really high end pieces of equipment but I'm on the water almost every day and I love fishing with this. If you're just getting into smallmouth fishing the great thing is these reels, the rod powers and actions are available through a range of price points and I'd recommend anybody that's heading out on the water smallmouth fishing just have a rod and reel that's similar to these two in the boat and you're going to be catching fish. This segment is brought to you by Blackfish Outdoor Apparel, because you can't choose the weather. The awareness on how good smallmouth fishing is all over the country started when large tournament organizations like Bass FLW, Major League Fishing, started to have events up north, and the anglers just started to see how explosive the fishing was. I said, man, this is some of the best fishing I've ever seen in my life. They said, keep coming up, keep coming up. And it started on the Great Lakes and then it went to other bodies of water. And it's interesting, we spend a lot of time in the Sunset Country, that's in Ontario. We've been fishing smallmouth up here for years. And now we come to these fishing camps and we talk to them a little bit about, about, about what's happening. It used to be walleye, walleye, walleye. Now it's smallmouth, smallmouth, smallmouth. And they, they all said the same thing. We love getting these smallmouth guys up here because they catch and release all the fish. Yeah, yeah, you know, they don't hurt the fishery. And they all confirm the same thing. These fish are getting bigger, more plentiful, a longer growing season. I just had one just come under my popper and look at it, Dan. Oh, got him oh, that you time. got him. Little guy. You know, a lot, a lot of things, a lot of things positive that are causing this smallmouth explosion. You know, the, the warmer weather patterns, what? no doubt have it. It's, it. it's taken the growing season you know, and expanded it up in this north country where smallmouth are king uh, a lot longer. Exciting time. If you're a smallmouth fisherman like we are and really love it, and a lot of people are really starting to become so, so avid, they love this stuff. And they're, because they're, the fish fight, they jump, they're visual, they're plentiful. Isn't that what fishing is all about? <laughs> I think this guy had, a, had another one with him, Al. Did it? Yeah. Not your prototypical smallmouth spot. I think it's so interesting about smallmouth is they are, for lack of a better term, a great gateway fish. You know, if you're just getting into fishing, they're a great starter. They bite on a lot of different stuff. They bite all four seasons. They grow big. And there's lots of them. They like to jump. <laughs> Those are all good, really good attributes for a gateway fish. A little bit different profile bait than Al's throwing. The Rapala BX swim bait. You know, and there's a variety of topwater baits that these smallmouth like, you know. One, this for a topwater bait, you can throw this thing a country mile. Two, it, uh, when it walks across the water, it throws off a big profile, you know, uh, as a silhouette against that blue sky, it just makes a big ruckus up there, gives those fish something to locate. And uh, three, it hooks like a champ. And you will catch, you'll catch big fish on it, big, big fish. And I think that the sweetest part about this bait is, as far as fishing a topwater bait, you can fish it 
so fast. I mean, as far as efficiency with a topwater bait, you can't fish a jump bait this fast. You can probably fish a prop bait, you know, th this fast, but even a popper is a little bit slower. So it's a really efficient bait for topwater fishing. And you can throw it just about anywhere. You can throw it right on top of a log and just let it float and just walk it, crawl it right across those logs. And boy, it drives those fish crazy. There we go. I'm not sure if it, uh, is yeah, that's a smallmouth. That is. It's definitely a smallmouth. A better one. Oh yeah, not not a giant, but a better one. My my first cast would uh whoa. What did did you switch up a little bit? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'll call it a poor man's Ned rig. <laughs> yeah, you know, just a you know, ooh. You know when they get on a tube or you know, a little stick worm like this. This is a big bite stick worm, and I just bit it off and shorten it up a little bit. And yeah, you know, they really like it. I got to get some more of these out here. I got a bag of them here. Yeah, just take that. what I'm doing is take, taking a whole bunch of these. You know, instead instead of rigging them wacky, they been throw that there. I shorten it down to about that size. That's what they've been liking. About as simple as it gets. Cast it out, swim it back really slow, jiggle it, let it drop. It's one of those baits you can't do anything wrong with and you're gonna get bit. They like so many baits, and I think that's what makes the, the fish so much fun. You, you know, you can catch smallmouth all season long, even under the ice. I kind of, myself, I'd rather leave them rest in the winter under the ice. Give them a little rest after, after a, long, a long season of open water. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. Oh, got another one, Dan. Feels good. Feels good. Feels good, Bubba. Are you grubbing No, them? it ain't like that other fish. It ain't like that. Nice. You better block us down here, Chief. Today, there's been so much emphasis on swimming boot tails. You know, everybody's on the boot tail kick. Yeah, you know, you know, and great boot tails will work. And they're gonna wear themselves out like everything else does over time. And, but the grub, you don't ever put away a grub on smallmouth. You gotta have it. They always produce some fish. You gotta have it to your bag of tricks. Like you don't go smallmouth fishing without hair or a tube. Old school, baby, white grub on a jig head. Simple as it gets. White, white, white grub, old school, old school, old school. Yeah. I've been mixing this up so much. You know, these windswept points now. I had a couple of really big fish. Uh, I just, you know, it's two spawning bays. Both of these bays, rock pile, shallow rock pile and bank, they spawn, they spawn back here. These transition points coming in. Ooh, yeah, I saw that pink disappear. Little, that's see, little, that's fun, right? Little, little. You watch that pink just all of a sudden go. <laughs> He set the hook. That's why I fish it so much. <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you something about color. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a, ah, hang on. You know, you, I'm sure some of you are, are looking at what I'm throwing. It ain't a big fish, but we'll get one. I'm throwing a, a, a soft plastic, pink 
This is a, a, a big bike, inner soft plastic jerk bait. This color is really good for smallmouth. In a soft plastic jerk bait, a pink X wrap. Terminator has a, a pink spinner bait that I occasionally use on smallmouth water. Uh, pink top water baits. These fish like pink. And you got another th thing I like about it. You, you could see it a long distance off. It's one of those, I'm not a huge, huge color person, but when it comes to smallmouth, pink is one of my favorite colors. Throwing that pink bait, it's just fun to watch. And the same thing with this BX. Your eyes are always on it. Ellen and I got onto a bite a number of years ago. These smallmouth were devouring this bait over open water. And that's, that's kind of an interesting story too, you know what I mean? We're fishing shallow water right now, but these smallmouth bass, the big ones, were feeding on open water forage. And these fish go out to sea. They're the big boys. They don't have to stay around this stuff. They go out to sea and hunt wherever they want to. And uh, I don't know how many big fish we caught, but they were huge. And they would just come up and drill this bait over 20 foot of water, you know, just adjacent to, adjacent to, uh, you know, some, some structure and they're chasing bait down. And that's what the, those big fish, they can do whatever they, whatever they darn well please. I just yeah. threw and you, you got him. Okay. Feels like a good brownie. I got, I got a spot lock this, this spot. Spot lock, it's, it's too good, yeah. Nice. Boy, I see some, we got to fan cast these rocks. Yeah. You get these spots like this, you could, you could look, you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven big boulders, you know, and you hook one on it. That way you could work those spots good. That spot lock on this, Min Min Kota is so amazing. Throwing a boot tail, a little boot tail on a jig head. We're by, we've been throwing a little bit of everything, and uh, if you pick up a rod and you're working the right water at the right time, you know, bingo, the smallies are, are on it. What looks like small, good smallmouth water it is good, is good smallmouth, smallmouth water. water, right, at this time. That's the beauty about a smallmouth bass. They like to play. These fish are so much different than a largemouth in nature, the basic nature of the fish. Largemouth like to hunker down on cover and live in an area for a long time. Smallmouth bass, in any given day, they're in on that structure. They're out on that structure. They move a lot. They move more like a walleye than a largemouth. Largemouth like to sit in spots. Smallmouth go boom, boom, boom. When they do that, that means a lot of different kind of baits uh, uh, will produce those fish. That's what, that's what makes the fish challenging and so much fun. That's why they're becoming one of North America's most popular fish these days, and that's a good thing. The Edge is presented by these and other fine sponsors. It's like a big, it's a good small, if it's a small, it oh, is. Oh yeah, that's Yeah, the... she's a good one. She's a good one. Ew. Oh, that's a big gal. That's a that's big gal. That's the one gal, I was boy. looking for. You know what that bit on? Old school. Old faithful? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I said she's a big one. Yeah. Old school all the way. A white grub. Fishing a white grub for this big toad. I love it. This is what makes smallmouth fishing so exciting. You keep coming back, coming back, and coming back when you catch fish like this. Hey, what we're talking today, if, if you're a hardcore smallmouth fisherman, you can relate to everything we're talking about, and you're going, thumbs up. Yeah, baby, I love it. If you've never done this before, you're missing the boat. You're missing a boat. You've got to start chasing smallmouth. It's a good butt bet. There's a lot of smallmouth quite close to where you're sitting watching this show right now. It could be a lake. It could be a river. A lot of cases, it's rivers, and they're, but they're plentiful. They're all over North America. They're all over the US and Canada, and they're one of the most enjoyable fish you could fish for these days. And it's, they're bigger and better than ever before.
A quick article I read in the newspaper the other day. Headline, social media reacts to removal of Ten Commandments plaque. It's been on a Minnesota courthouse since the building opened in 1958. That's the headline to the newspaper. Goes on to say uh, uh, they received a letter from the Freedom From Religion Foundation, and uh, uh, which is made up, now catch this, which is made up of 30,000 members across the country. 600 are Minnesota members, and our local chapters of Lake Superior Freethinkers, I love the word freethinkers, and Grand Rapids Atheists and Freethinkers. By the way, I am a freethinker. We just don't free think the same way. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm sure of that. And, but what gets my attention, today you're constantly seeing attacks about uh, 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 people being offended by the Ten Commandments. In God we trust, I want it out of here. Uh, 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 uh. You see people attacking God's word everywhere. And I look at these numbers, here's the thing that gets to me. 30,000 members, 600 people in Minnesota, what do we got? Maybe uh, we're pushing six million people that live in the state of Minnesota. And I got 600 people that caused this kind of problem because they're offended. What about me being offended by why? Because they're offended of something that I believe in and follow every single day of my life. This is a bunch of baloney and I'm sick and tired of it. How can so few people have that kind of impact? I'd love to see these, these laws go up for a vote, federal and at state levels, and see how many of us really are offended. How many of us believe in the Ten Commandments? How many of us want to follow them? We believe it's a better world to live in. When I look at this stuff, and I look at the news at night, and follow it in the paper when I come home at night, and I see the insanity that's going on in the world, and people are scratching their head, you know what that is? It's a small, small glimpse of what a world without God looks like. And that's just the beginning. We can't let this insanity keep going. Let's do something about it. Don't roll over. I gotta calm down right now, Nick. Yeah, hey, hey, from all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water. For me and my house, the Ten Commandments are a way of life and something I'm gonna live by because the world will be a better place because of it. From all of us here at the Edge, you have a good, safe fishing season. We'll see you on the water.